For our next presentation, now that we're all sufficiently inebriated, uh, we can really dig our teeth into a nice meaty subject. Uh, Marco Strang, CEO of Genesis Mining, which is one of the biggest cloud mining companies, is going to be talking about what uh, challenges are currently being faced in the mining landscape, and cover topics such as scalability issues, efficiency optimization, and an outlook to the future of mining. Please welcome Marco Strang. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, introducing me, Andreas. Uh, thank you very much, also, Fran, for organizing this conference. Um, I really have to say, uh, I'm, I'm on a very a long trip now, uh, having met uh, directly uh, attended uh, a lot of Bitcoin conferences before. First Sao Paulo, then directly to Paris, from Paris directly to London, London uh, now here, and after that to Dubai. And I have to see that I have to say that it's um, a really uh, a really uh, nice uh, people here, and also uh, it's remarkable uh, how interested everybody here is. Uh, it's uh, not so common that. Uh, uh, you have so much uh, questions after the uh, after the uh, talks. <coughs> okay, so uh, let's get started. Um, I guess it's a uh, it's a very uh, interesting uh, field, and uh, probably a lot uh, of you are very interested in hearing this. So um, the schedule for the talk uh, is: I'm going to give you a short introduction what mining is. Uh, after that, I'm going to talk uh, shortly about home mining, cloud mining, um, and the difference. And uh, then uh, we're going to be more deeper into large-scale mining operation. I'm going to show you a concrete example. Um, and uh, please, uh, I don't want that this is uh, uh, kind of understood as, a, as an advertisement for uh, the, the company. I think it's, uh, it's just, it just makes sense because we are one of the biggest cloud mining companies. And um, this, uh, talking about a large-scale mining operation, it just makes sense to show some of our farms. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, it wouldn't make sense uh, to, to show anything else. <coughs> um, yeah, after uh, the, uh, sh showing you this uh, example, uh, we are going to talk about the op optimizations that can be done on the cl uh, in cloud mining, uh, either on the hardware side as well as on the software side. And then I'm giving you a little fu uh, some uh, future perspectives, what uh, the future of mining will be uh, look looking like, and uh, some nice and cool and promising, uh, promising technologies uh, at the end. Okay, so what is mining? Um, Bitcoin is a decentralized system, and uh, the problem is how do we reach consensus about the state of the system? Um, that, that is the, the main question and the, the main uh, task that needs to be solved. And um, mining is a distributed consensus system, which uh, offers an, a solution to this problem. So how does it work? Miners uh, select uncon unconfirmed transactions, um, which uh, are um, which are going uh, which which are called uh, or which are <laughs> which are going to be summarized in the block. The block also contains a free parameter called a nonce. Um, what you are going to do as a miner is calculating the hash uh, of the block. And you do it in a way that uh, you're tweaking the, the nonce uh, and, um, and um, doing the hash function on the nonce and the block so that it, uh, a distinct uh, output is coming out. And this output has to be of a certain form. I want to give you a, um, a concrete example of that so that everybody knows, uh, sees better how that works. For example, here um, you see that the task is uh, actually here to find, um, to, to find a nonce so that when you're, um, when you're having the, when you calculate the hash of the previous block and the current block, 
and the nonce that the result is going to be smaller than 100. And mining is basically tweaking the nonce uh, parameter and doing the hash and doing the and calculating the hash until you, um, f you and until the output is smaller than, for example, in this case, smaller than 100. So you try it here. You see, um, yeah, the, the first uh, try is 1,023, which is uh, bigger than 100. Uh, so there's no a nice result. You go on, uh, and the next uh, the next result is 198. Still no success, and you continue like that. And uh, for example, here in the last run, um, you have 35. So you're successful. You found uh, the new block, and the nonce for this block is 107, which uh, solves the block. Uh, just to give you a kind of uh, uh, understanding um, what sizes and dimension we are now at. We are uh, currently um, the Bitcoin uh, total uh, hash rate of, of the Bitcoin network is uh, 280 peta hash. And uh, I have written the number here out. Um, so you see it with 280 and with all these zeros, uh, hashes per second, meaning tries uh, to calculate this hash. Uh, per second. So the ne network is trying so many operations per second to find the new block. It's quite remarkable. <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge, uh, a huge number. Yeah, so the question is now, uh, wh why should I do it as a miner? And uh, the answer for that is, um, yeah, because you get rewarded. Um, the, wi the, the, the one that finds the block um, gets rewarded by 25 bitcoins now. And um, when time passes, after some uh, distinct time, there will appear a block halving. So the reward for the miners get halved. You only will receive 12.5 on the next halving for finding a block. And after that, only the half for, of, of uh, 6.25. Um, to receive a block and and this uh, goes down and down until uh, at some point in time there will not be any uh, reward anymore and miners have to live from the fees uh, that uh, can be uh, that miners get when um, when uh, users of uh, the, of Bitcoin when they send a Bitcoin they attend a small fee for the miners. <coughs> Also, an uh, important thing to mention is that the Bitcoin hash rate is growing exponentially. Uh, which is, yeah, I mean, it's obvious because, um, yeah, as soon as there is an opportunity to make money, um, you, you naturally uh, create so much miners, the manufacturers create so much chips to mine and uh, be profitable. And that way it drives the, dif the difficulty, of course, up. Uh, just a, uh, one, just quick sentences about um, the uh, evolution of mining. Uh, it started in the very early days with uh, CPUs, so everybody with their home computer started uh, could, was able to mine. Satoshi mined with uh, his uh, small laptop, uh, and he mined uh, a huge amount um, because there was no uh, nobody else uh, mining, and um, my uh, and the. Bitcoin is designed in a way that this uh, the, the 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 amount of coins that are distributed from the system are shared between the miners. So if you're alone, you get all the reward. And he made it with his laptop. And everybody who mined in the early days was also able to mine very very uh, easily the coins. Um, from CPU, it, it went down. It went then to GPU. GPU was more efficient than CPU, and from GPU, you could do more uh, optimization by uh, designing FPGAs. And from FPGAs, you could could go even further to designing specific chips um, called ASIC chips, uh, where we are uh, now. <coughs> so uh, yeah, I wanna. Here is a, a nice example of uh, a home miner. Um, a home miner is uh, someone who is uh, buying uh, mostly hardware from manufacturer or retailer. Uh, he is uh, he's installing the hardware using mostly standard uh, PC accessories, like normal PSUs of computers or the standard um, things um, that you use to, to, to run uh, a miner. Um, and 
installation of software using mostly co uh, community-driven open source programs. In comparison to that, cloud mining, uh, cloud mining operators mostly don't buy from retailers. They usually, when they are big, uh, they go directly to the hardware manufacturer and make a bigger deal, making a bulk order and getting heavily dis uh, uh, discounted prices. The installation of hardware in large-scale facilities with optimized infrastructure and um, also uh, at least we and I suppose also most of the others are having uh, customized uh, software to control uh, the ha uh, and uh, optimize the hash power even further. Okay, so I'm giving you a, here now a, an example how uh, Genesis Mining started and uh, how it evolved. I think it's a good example to see how uh, actually a large mining operation is formed. It, it doesn't normally start from, from nothing. Uh, there is a natural e evolution process and uh, I just want to brief you this. I think it's, it's quite interesting to see. So <clears throat> when I started, or Actually, uh, last year, um, we, uh, what can I say? I mean, Bitcoin mining was quite developed by that time uh, last year already. But what was uh, new last year was that Litecoin, by the, pr by, by the time when Bitcoin rose from 100 to 1,200, also Litecoin exploded in the price. And Litecoin is a slightly different algorithm to mine than Bitcoin. It's script. And for script, there was not uh, already um, ASIC miners or FPGAs. It was still um, in the early stage. So everybody with his, co uh, with his graphic card uh, could start to mine uh, Litecoin. And it was a, a huge gold rush um, where really, uh, I guess by that time in America, uh, all the bigger retailers were completely sold out of graphic cards. Because everybody directly, they, they saw the opportunity. They, they buy a graphic card, mine some days, um, get their money back, and then have the graphic card and uh, can do whatever they want. And uh, they can even make money within a short time. So it was a huge, a huge gold rush. And uh, we directly decided uh, uh, we have to find a source to get a lot of GPUs if we want to scale this thing up. And uh, luckily, we found one. And uh, it was a European retailer. And uh, I, I guess uh, we completely sold them out uh, for several weeks. So he didn't deliver any graphic card to anybody else. Uh, <laughs> uh, then to uh, our facility, um, which we decided to, st uh, to start in, in uh, Bosnia. Um, that's, that is the facility you see on the right. Uh, why Bosnia? Uh, Bosnia, um, just because the electricity is uh, quite good there, and uh, we also had a good connection to someone um, managing the uh, IT uh, security infrastructure of the biggest banks, and he took care that uh, the facilities are safe. So, uh, yeah, we decided uh, this uh, operation, and I just want to give you a, a short video to see how, how this uh, scale, how already in this early stage, the, we, we, what kind of uh, big scale we, are, we have reached by then. Yeah, so it's, uh, I guess no one had uh, thought that GPUs or graphic cards can be so loud. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's indeed like that. It's like a factory inside. Um, some of our stuff is uh, wearing uh, ear pads uh, because it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite noisy. And that was all built up with, uh, uh, it was quite some time because you had to stick to piece together the pieces all manually. And uh, yeah, it was it was an exciting time. <coughs> yeah, so that that was our GPU farm. That was the by that time uh, for script uh, we we discovered or generally there was this opportunity to just mine Litecoin with the GPUs, and even that you can this uh, you can uh, exchange Litecoin to Bitcoin and receive Bitcoin. And by that time, uh, by going going this kind of extra way. Uh, you were able to be much more profitable than uh, mining pure Bitcoin by that time. 
because the Bitcoin market was already completely overcrowded and the difficulty rose extremely, but in Litecoin there was no a more efficient technology. So that, that uh, gave a unique opportunity. And uh, <laughs> just on a side note, um, the GPUs, uh, due to this gold rush uh, happening, um, AMD, uh, which actually is the manufacturer of the cards where mining was uh, highly profitable, NVIDIA, which is actually the market leader in the graphic cards market, uh, didn't have the, the, so much uh, efficient uh, cards to mine. So NVIDIA had a huge rush. And actually, I, I remember by that time, I uh, suggested a friend of mine, a bigger investor, to maybe... Uh, yeah, buy uh, AMD stock, uh, and uh, it turned out to be a very nice decision. <laughs> and um, yeah, and uh, and also after that, um, because when we saw later then that uh, newer technology was arising and the GPUs are getting obsolete, uh, it was also a logical consequence to uh, think about shorting AMD now because it was uh, artificially high and. Uh, it was only because of the mining, and the mining wasn't so profitable anymore. So he shorted again, and uh, it turned out also out to be a very good decision. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. So here, here uh, what I just said, um, the new, uh, new, new technology arises, ASIC miners for script. And uh, it's like in the Bitcoin world, there we had also ASIC miners. Of course, it was uh, much, much more time before. Um, but here they are. Uh, we directly saw that, and um, we decided directly to go to move to, to China and see the manufacturer. And um, since we were already an established cloud mining company, we decided to team up with them and uh, buy in bulk orders the chips. So that's where we are. Uh, that is uh, one of our facilities in Asia, in, uh, in China, um, to be more precise. Um, we have just built up uh, yeah, we, we have built up the, the, the facility and deployed all the miners th containing the ASIC chips. And um, then later, when, um, when, yeah, when the ASICs uh, were uh, improving, um, the electricity prices get more and more important. And for us, it was clear China is not the most efficient uh, uh, place to be. Uh, it was by that time, it was a good decision because you had to, you had very, every day counted extremely because uh, you, you could have done a lot of money within one day. So it was the main purpose just to deploy the miner very quickly. But later, it was, it was, was more, um, more clever to search for a place, uh, an electricity sweet spot. Um, that uh, where you can just uh, where you don't have that high uh, electricity uh, costs. So the consequence there was uh, we're going to move to Iceland. Um, we found a nice way uh, to f um, to get a really cool uh, real estate and um, and not going into t into the mainstream direction to the data centers, which are also very big, but that would wouldn't have not be the, the wisest uh, option. So we f figured out a way, and we uh, established these facilities, and um, yeah, we are quite happy here. You see uh, our CTO in front of uh, one of the uh, yeah mining mining uh, operation, and uh, yeah, so. Uh, that was just an example of how this evolved. So we, we started also with GPUs and then expanded more and more and had to look on uh, making it more efficient, had to uh, uh, look at for uh, a nice place for uh, electricity and move to Iceland. And um, now I want to tell you about the optimization and the opportunities uh, that um, we are generally are for a large scale mining operation. So you have uh, customized and uh, cost-efficient cooling solutions in Iceland, um, meaning that we don't we are we, we don't have uh, a kind of cooling that is uh, common in a in a data center. We made a customized one to save uh, electricity. And the, when you are in Iceland, you have the comfortability that the outside temperature is very cool. 
So you just had to find a way to save costs and use the outside temperature. And basically, the, uh, you could eventually see it on one of the pictures. You just let the, you open, so to say, the windows and uh, let the cold airs flow through the miners and then pump it up to the, to the air again, uh, which uh, this kind of structure uh, turned out to be uh, the most efficient one uh, I have seen in the cloud mining world. <clears throat> We also have on the hardware side uh, optimization uh, for uh, automized fallback and compensation systems. That means, for example, if one of our customer um, is purchasing uh, hash power from us uh, and uh, the rigs are going down for whatever reason, we still have a buffer from our miners um, that, w that automatically are switched in this case so that the, the users are, is guaranteed 100% uptime. Also, we have a, an advanced monitoring system, uh, heat sensors, and we, we, are, we are doing performance tracking so that the miners are really uh, maintain their performance. And we also have increased security. We have remote hands. We have people there at the place 24-7 on standby. And uh, we have cameras and alarm system. And also, what we diversify uh, across separate facilities and locations. Um, it's uh, just uh, an additional security. Um, yeah, it's, it's always good to spread the risk a bit. <clears throat> okay, so, yeah, so um, now we come to a, a quite specialty. I think this is a, a system that um, is quite unique in the market, and um, this solution, uh, we, we are providing this solution as one of the only, actually the only one in this market. Um, it comes a bit from the fact that we also did before mining, we, we, did, uh, we did trading, algorithmic trading. We spend a lot of time um, f getting the right algorithms to arbitrage the market, the, the Bitcoin markets, and do uh, also um, yeah, all sorts of advanced trading between the exchanges. And um, so we had some, some kind of expertise also on this level and we brought that into the mining operation. So we are having, uh, we are having this example uh, shows that we are using, uh, for example, an additional layer where we are distributing the hash power of the units, uh, of, of, the user, of the user's hash, po hash power over several multipools that exist. And uh, we do that in a way that it's most efficient for the user. So there is several multipools. Every multipool has its own performance. And we are selecting the most profitable multipool for our users to get the max profit. This is stage one. Stage two would be um, we provide a very easy and uh, comfortable interface for our users to mine altcoins. Um, so the, the user can, uh, can distribute his hash power in a way that he can, for example, say, hey, I want to mine 10% of my hash power to Litecoin, 30% to Dogecoin, and uh, he's just tweaking it in the user interface, and in the back, the machines are switching uh, from, from one, one uh, coin to another, which is also quite unique. <clears throat> and that offers a, a lot of opportunities. I will come uh, uh, soon to this point again. And now this is all, uh, actually the real expertise uh, where our, our algorithmic trading framework comes in. Um, we are able to take the hash power from the user, um, put it into the control unit, <coughs> and the control unit uses our uh, algorithmic trading bot to uh, do a portfolio optimization with the hash power in a way that it's mining the most profitable uh, portfolio of altcoins, and then Go, giving uh, the, the altcoins to the trader, and the trader is liquidating them for the best uh, conditions and on the best, uh, for the best prices to Bitcoin and pays out the user in Bitcoin. So it's quite convenient, and uh, a lot of our users uh, prefer this option, of course, because uh, they don't have to do much, actually, and, uh, and have a quite good uh, um, efficiency by, by this uh, technique, what, by this uh, framework uh, and the trader which is running in the back. <clears throat> um, I, I don't want to go too much into the details of this, but it basically, because I mean, when you look at script or when you look at Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin is one 
one coin, but there are also other coins. And the other coins uh, are traded on the market and um, they, they are highly volatile. But that also gives an opportunity if a coin is going up, uh, it might be reasonable to mine it and then exchange it to Bitcoin to get a higher return than mining Bitcoin directly. And um, <clears throat> the trader is figuring out what is the most profitable portfolio at the moment to mine and then exchanges the, the, the altcoins to Bitcoin. Yeah, so uh, what's the future of mining? Uh, I guess, I think, I mean, everybody has his own opinion on that, but what I, from my experience and what, what I'm thinking is that um, there is an increased trend uh, to shift from home miners to cloud miners. Why? Because it was, uh, it was a, I mean, for a home miner, there was a lot of uh, opportunities in the past. And uh, yeah, especially if the Bitcoin price was rising, it was phenomenal. Um, but when you look now and compare a home miner to a cloud mining operation, you just have a huge advantages uh, in a way that you don't need as a, a when you're going to a cloud mining operator, you don't need to buy the, uh, the, the machine and let it ship, wait for the shipment, uh, pay eventually the tax. Then when it arrives, having a noisy and loud miner at home where you are not sure whether it's even uh, performing well. And um, so you, when you can just as, as an alternative choose a cloud mining uh, provider where you just purchase the hash power and on next day or immediately when the money is when you pay with bitcoin for example you have the hash power you have a hundred percent uptime guarantee you have an efficient uh, um, framework in the back that uh, increases the efficiency even more uh, this is just um, these are just advantages that cannot uh, yeah that that just supersede and um, that should make the decision for everybody quite clear uh, also, the fact that a cloud mining operator go goes or uh, has a very good relationship to the manufacturer and giving a very big discount uh, makes the prices also uncomparable. <clears throat> so, uh, there will also be a stronger binding of cloud mining service uh, providers and hardware manufacturers. And, uh, and that is actually a quite interesting point. There will be an emerging war to get the, electric, uh, to ele the, get the electrical power sweet spots on the planet. Because power is a very important, uh, plays a very important role in this whole scene. Because power, the electricity you pay, uh, determine your uh, ability to compete. And if you're paying a high electricity, and your competitor doesn't uh, pay this high electricity, you, you so to see, lo lose this, uh, you cannot compete with him. So um, there's a lot of effort from various parties now to get the best locations on the planet with having the, the, the cheapest electricity price. And also one point is that, um, yeah, the, the community. Uh, it will be more, um, for the cloud mining providers, it will be a more interactive and uh, com com community-driven mining. For example, I, just, just to, to, to name one, um, we are going to provide for the users uh, the uh, opportunity, um, I mean, everybody has the opportunity to use the auto trader, but next to that, we have also very advanced uh, users who are very technical and uh, who watch the markets very carefully, what altcoin is very profitable at the moment and what is very attractive to mine. And um, for example, when you pick a nice uh, portfolio and hold the coins, it might turn out that one or two days later, uh, it's just significantly gained on value and it's much better than the auto trader because the auto trader doesn't look in the future. It, uh, it um, immediately trades the coins. It determines the most profitable portfolio at a point in time and then exchanges them. So we are going to start a kind of competition uh, to also uh, yeah, uh, challenge our users and uh, reward at the end of every week uh, the most profitable miner uh, of our users. So the one who is picking the most profitable portfolio. So that's, that's one step which is also going because, yeah, I mean, you can, you can mine only Bitcoin, but there's also, uh, there's also much more fun and expertise you, you can bring in. Oh, yeah, and uh, I guess uh, as, a, as a kind of closing word, um, the, the future perspectives. 
uh, and the pro uh, promising technologies that uh, that can arise. And uh, I w I, I'm just telling you about two things here. Uh, it's Gridcoin and, and CureCoin. Both coins are very small at the moment. The community is not so big, but in my opinion, it offers a very huge opportunity. Gridcoin, for example, um, is a coin where mining is uh, done by, uh, by doing simulations, scientific simulations. The, the coin and the developers of the coin are teaming up uh, or are using the Boink uh, system, which is the simulation uh, network, computing simulation network of uh, Berkeley University. And uh, you as a miner participate on that and you're driving the, the research uh, in a way that uh, you are simulating the, 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 the simulations of the researchers. <clears throat> and for them it's sometimes very hard to get funding uh, to, to run their simulations. So it's a very nice thing that you just invite the miners to use their hash power and uh, mine and as a reward get, uh, get grid coin. And the same uh, or similar is CureCoin where um, it's not the Berkeley um, simulation center, it's, uh, it's folding at home that is used uh, as a way to use the, the, mi the mining power, the, com the computing power, to fold proteins. And um, I, I don't know whether you have heard it before, but folding proteins is also um, a very interesting research topic and offers you the opportunity to, uh, or the, uh, offers the researcher to get more and more knowledge uh, what can, w how a protein can fold, and that can lead to um, to new uh, to to new medicines and to new drugs uh, for uh, very big diseases, uh, for example, Alzheimer, AIDS, or cancer, which is also a huge, huge hugely interesting topic. Folding at home itself is a nice uh, is a nice project, but if you combine it to mining and really give people the initiative to to do it. That's, I think, a remar remarkable technology, and I just wanted to give you these two, uh, two aspects of uh, promising technologies that are arising. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, uh, that, that, that uh, said as a closing word, uh, thank you very much for your attention, and uh, have a cool time. So it sounds, it's working, right? It sounds like you guys, you guys have moved your farm around quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so are you planning, is, your, is the next move going to take advantage of solar energy? Um, and if so, feel free to text me which solar companies I should buy. Uh, call options are. <laughs> uh, yeah, to be honest, we have looked at this uh, in detail. Um, but what the result was actually that even in the sub subsidized regions, it's not profitable. It's, uh, there are better alternatives not using solar technology. Maybe you can find out a, a system that is better, but uh, it's difficult for, for yeah, solar. The energy is getting cheaper very quickly. Yeah, but you have upfront costs and um, you don't know. I mean, Bitcoin mining is also quite temporarily limited. Uh, you cannot plan in 20 years of Bitcoin mining operations, it's, it's just a too long time frame. But it's a good question. Uh, if, you if you have a breakthrough on this, in this area, or if you can just, uh, the, the use, because wh when you're mining, the electricity power is going uh, nearly 100% in heat, because there is no deformation energy. So uh, you just have to find a way to get the heat back in the electricity, or, 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 or take it somewhere, uh, somehow else. It's a very interesting topic, and uh, I think there, there might be opportunities for people finding some, some new ways out. So I have a big question, unfortunately. Uh -huh. um, uh, cloud mining is very controversial. Yeah. Because, yeah. because it's, in many ways, it's, it's, you can't distinguish it from a Ponzi scheme. Um, and uh, the big question is, why does a cloud mining company sell uh, so Bitcoin's at a discount to its customers. Yeah. For example, for a co uh, contract you might sell, you could, your miners can mine 10, 10 Bitcoins, yet you sell the contract for seven Get Bitcoins. Why don't, you, why don't you just mine? Very good question, very good question. And I'm very glad that, is a, that uh, it is arising here. So first of all, uh, in, in our case, I can just tell you, um, we 
don't want to put all our uh, our eggs in one basket. Uh, we are running already a quite decent uh, farm on our own, um, next to the farm of, of, of Genesis Mining. It's, it's contained in it. Uh, and we, uh, yeah, we, we commit ourselves with, with a very large amount. Um, but that doesn't mean that uh, we take all. You know, if clients are coming and they want to mine, we are expanding our farm and op uh, offering them uh, the opportunity. So we are selling in a way that, yeah, we, we keep our, we keep our uh, amount of hash power and we keep our uh, size, uh, but still we are, off, we, are, we are buying more and more and uh, sell it to users. It's, a, it's a, in a way of diversifying. We don't want to put all our money into it. We have at least, we are, we are committing ourselves. We have a decent amount uh, placed in it, but yeah, it's a di diversification uh, aspect. And uh, to the first point, uh, very, very important. There is a lot of, uh, of Ponzi schemes and uh, scam uh, in this market, uh, especially uh, um, people are more and more realizing that you can, uh, you can do really nice fraud, actually, and very easy fraud and get away with it. So this uh, market, the, the, the bad thing is not only that uh, it, it is there, the bad thing is it actually is growing. So uh, it's a very, very important point that everybody uh, should do that di due diligence with whom uh, he's choosing as a, a mining provider. And uh, I think there is a lot of aspects that you can uh, test to see whether someone is a Ponzi scheme or not, just uh, that everybody understands. Ponzi scheme meaning in this, in this specific case that uh, you don't read or actually have uh, all the hardware in the back or the machines that you claim to have. You just act like you do so pay the users out uh, with their coins, but they even don't know, you don't actually mine in the back. So you take the, the incoming uh, amount that's coming from the new users and, and pay your old, uh, your old customers with this. And um, yeah, uh, as I said, uh, do you do diligence? For example, very important points, that is, is the cloud mining company transparent? Does they show the facilities? We, for example, uh, uh, one of our highest priorities is to, to let everybody see what, what we are running. We even uh, fly our bigger uh, clients uh, with a helicopter over our facilities in Iceland uh, to see everything. <coughs> and, um, and then our other uh, aspects that also come with it. Um, do they offer uh, unrealistic rates? Do they offer uh, some kinds of things that are not realistic, that a miner mines double of the hash power now in the next three hours and then <laughs> returns or something? It's, it doesn't make sense. So these are very important points, and I really want to tell this to everybody. Be very careful um, when it comes uh, to cloud mining and when you, when you want to do an investment in mining. Choose the right uh, provider. Very, very important. A very quick question about CureCoin, if that's okay. Um, is it share mined with Bitcoin? And if not, wouldn't that be like a good idea for the protein folding aspect? Yeah, um, it is. Uh, CureCoin is, um, you're using your GPUs to, uh, to, ma uh, to m make the protein folding and you're using a, a SHA hash power to, 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 to get the reward. It's a, yeah, so it's double-sided in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 that, that's a, I mean, uh, you cannot, unfortunately, a SHA ASIC, a Bitcoin ASIC miner, is stupid in a way that it's only able to mi make this one hash, this one function. It's, uh, and nothing else. And uh, protein folding is not only this hash. It's, it's uh, protein folding is, you, you're doing complex uh, uh, computation and you need a GPU for this. So we, are wa we want to go into this direction. We are looking at it now, and we want to offer it uh, to users. I mean, first, uh, then the user can c earn CureCoin, with all, which also has a value. And secondly, it's uh, uh, supporting the, 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 the medical research. It's a huge thing. I mean, I really, uh, this is actually wh where, where I personally would like to go. And um, I'm quite sure that we will figure there something out um, to make it possible for everybody. Because we are having one of the biggest GPU farms in, in Europe, and you need a big GPU farm for that. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>